Hey, how's it going everybody? It's your boy. Guess what? It's hack broad time. And well, it seems like the saga of this particular hack broad just doesn't seem to end. I mean, I remember making videos about her in the early, early days of the last channel. It's a, uh, it's a uh, mattress girl. Yep, Emma Sulkowitz. She just can't seem to just leave everybody alone and to just do what she needs to do in life after she got away with falsely accusing somebody. And yes, Emma Sulkowitz, the saga continues. Which boogaloo are we on? I don't know, because this is like, what, the third, fourth time I've made a video on her, because she just keeps coming back. And no matter what we do, we can ignore her for ages. We can make videos on her for ages. She always comes back in the end, because she's the media darling. She's the no perfect victim. Oh, well, that was Jackie, but she still is kind of the same. Now for those of you who don't remember who she was, uh, she was the person who, uh, I forgot what university, she was, I think it was Columbia, she went to Columbia University and she got into a casual relationship with this guy called Paul Nungesser and at one point it ended and I think he just wanted to end it, move on to other people or to other things and she didn't like that and she accused him of rape. Now, of course, at the time, Title IX was well in effect, although I wagered that this could still happen even today in America. It happens all the time in the UK, and we don't have Title IX. She accuses him of rape, and then he gets investigated by, I think, not only the university authorities, but also the police, and his name was cleared. However, she wasn't satisfied with that. She realised that she had failed to ruin his life through the legal channels, and instead decided to ruin his life through other means, such as harassing him. So she created an art project, which the university allowed her to do, especially the art faculty, where she would walk around with a mattress. And this picked up media attention. They assumed that she was the innocent victim of a rape. Well, she wasn't, because, as Paul Lungess approved in an article with Kathy Young, she actually was the one who was propositioning him a lot of the time. In fact, she wanted anal sex from him and I think he refused or just never got back to her and that made her very bitter. So this is the context. And now she has a new art project after a porno and some other thing that she did. Emma Sulkowitz, an artist, artist, best known for lugging a mattress around Columbia University in protest of the school's handling of rape allegations is making headlines again. Well, no, she didn't do it in protest of anything. She did it to ruin the guy's life, to harass him. On Tuesday, Sulkowitz accompanied by photographer Sang Suk Sylvia Kang, we was Kang's bro, staged a series of performative protests in New York at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Museum of Modern Art, and the Second Avenue subway station. The performance's main target, the New York Times reported, was the work of Chuck Close, who was recently accused of making crude comments to his female models. Clad in a pair of black underwear and asterisk-shaped pasties, Sulkowitz stood in front of Close's work at the Met and the 86th Street Q station, which features mosaics by the artist, including a colourful self-portrait. Yeah, because this is a great protest, isn't it? Scantily clad with stupid markings all over your body to what? Protest something that he may or may not have done? It doesn't surprise me that she's trying to take advantage of hashtag me too. I'm really not surprised. I mean, oh my god, seriously. She still thinks she's got a hot body. <laughs> she doesn't. Sulkowitz also hit the MOMA, pausing at Pablo Picasso's celebrated painting the Demoiselle de Avignon, Picasso's main conceit are these lines that chop up women's body, Sulkowitz told Artnet News. It's kind of dismembering bodies to rearrange them as more visually appealing. Firstly, it's cubism, Emma. You do understand that it's meant to be like that. It's not meant to be cutting up their bodies to look more appealing. In fact, if you look at that, at least for the time, they're not conventionally feminine and it's actually influenced by a lot of African and Iberian artwork. So... You can't really say that he's being sexist there. Why are you doing this? Like, clearly his attempt at showing whatever this may be is not sexist. But whatever, that's feminist for you. Anything that they think just looks wrong will be fucking protested. A few days before Tuesday's action, a story in The Times had explored the possibility that museums might soon offer disclaimers about the objectionable behaviour of artists alongside their work. Such contextualising notes marked with asterisks sometimes appear with controversial portrait sitters, but to add them for artists would be entering new territory. Why would you need a disclaimer for that stuff? Like, seriously, artists all through history have done and said and thought reprehensible things. Nobody's perfect. I'm not saying that whether or not what that guy did was wrong or anything. 
I don't know if he did anything. But even if he did, that doesn't take away from his art. And I don't think people need these disclaimers because if they're going into these museums anyway, I think the chances are they already know the backstory of these people. I was just so appalled by what the museum directors were saying in the article. One guy said something like, if we are going down this road, all of our museum walls should be bare. I was like, are you only showing work by Harvey Weinstein? Well, by that logic, all of Quentin Tarantino's films should be put into like a place and burned because Harvey Weinstein produced them, even though they're incredible works of art. By that logic, all of Kevin Spacey's films are The Usual Suspects should be gone. Even the films where he just does a cameo should be gone because he's in there. Even works like Alice in Wonderland should be gone because of things that the author may or may not have thought and done. This is the problem with this type of behaviour and this type of thinking. But of course it doesn't surprise me that she wants to destroy all this art. She wants her art to take precedence because even though she herself is no better than what he has been accused of, she probably did something that's probably far worse because from what this article has said, all he did was say something inappropriate. What she did was try to ruin a man's life and got away with it. An asterisk is such a small punctuation mark compared to the magnitude of how sexual abuse affects these women. That museum directors weren't even interested in speaking about it on those terms was really abhorrent to me. You weren't even sexually abused. You're just virtue signalling. All you're doing is demanding the removal of art from people who may have done or not have done bad things. That's ridiculous. This is akin to book burning. Stripping down in New York City was an uncomfortable experience for Sulkowitz. Really? She stripped down in front of the whole internet. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> she has no qualms for doing it. I, but I wanted to show that the asterisk is actually an embodied experience, Sulkowitz said, citing inspirational guerrilla performances by Andrea Fraser, who mimed sex with a pillar at the Guggenheim, Bill Bow in Little Frank and His Cat, and Deborah Di Robertis, who exposed her vagina while sitting in front of Gustave Courbet's explicit Le Origine du Monde, Origin of the World painting. These women had to reveal their bodies, and that's what made the performances so powerful. Right. They revealed private parts to the world to protest what exactly? Works of art that they didn't like. And all you're doing is virtue signaling. All you're doing is furthering the cause of social justice that wants to remove art that it finds problematic because either it represents messages that they don't like or people made them that they don't like and they should remove these artworks because it might be threatening and horrible to people even though it isn't. Art is subjective. Institutions' responses to allegations against high-profile artists have been varied. The National Gallery of Art in Washington DC decided to indefinitely postpone upcoming solo exhibitions for clothes, and another artist accused of sexual misconduct, Thomas Romer, who was one of Sulkowitz's art professors at Columbia, it's kind of interesting, Seattle University removed a close work formally on display at its library after five women came forward with complaints about James Franco, his Palo Alto High School, whitewashed a mural he had painted on campus in 2014, and he was photoshopped out of Vanity Fair cover shot by Annie Leibovitz. They're removing people. This is 1984. This is what they would have done in that book. The whole thing of putting things down the memory hole. This is that, but for art. Photoshopping people out of Vanity Fair cover shots. Removing murals that somebody did. Removing statues of old colonial men who no longer have an influence on the world. Removing Close's work. In fact, stopping his solo exhibitions even though he's not been proven to have done anything yet because they don't want the controversy, they don't want the problems that are associated with people like her. Uh, like, I can't believe the museum even allowed this. I mean, did she ask for permission? I assume she did, but if the museum is, like, a part of this and this is going against the whole being objective thing. The Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, however, has opted not to shorten the run of Chuck Close photographs, which originated at the Parish Art Museum in Water Mill, New York, and is scheduled to be on view through April 8th. Instead, they are curating a new exhibition that draws from the permanent collection to illustrate ways that gender imbalance and abuses of power have played out in the art world. Really? But at least they haven't removed his photos. He's innocent till proven guilty. So I can give them that, I guess. I am convinced that if we took the show down, we would be cleaning our hands of the situation, museum director Brooke Davis Anderson told the Huffington Post. I felt keeping the ex exhibition open would ensure we face this conversation rather than conclude that we've dealt with it by taking the show down. That this facilitates a difficult conversation. That's true. I agree with that. Earlier in the week, 
Sheena Wagstaff, the Met's chairman for modern and contemporary art, had cautioned against museums placing too much emphasis on sexual misconduct. By taking action in the form of cancelling an exhibition or removing art from the walls, a museum is creating an understanding of an artist's work only through the prism of reprehensible behaviour. If we only see abuse when looking at a work of art, then we have created a reductive situation in which art is stripped of its intrinsic worth, and which in turn provokes the fundamental question of what the museum's role in the world should be. Exactly. And another thing, a museum isn't just a place for art, it's a place for actual things that we have found through archaeology and historical inquiry. Like, by that logic, we should just remove all the works of art and armour and other things that we found in the Manchester Museum because of what the Romans and the medieval English did. Horrible things, by the way. They did some very borderline genocidal things. But we don't remove it because we want to remember the past. The museums are places where we learn and remember the past. By removing these things, we're either forgetting the past intentionally because of the bad things. We don't want to think about that, even though we should if we're going to learn from history. And another thing is that we're changing history. We're removing these things so that we can change the picture of what history actually is. And it's the same with art. This is what art is. This is what a person that created this amazing piece of art that may have broken boundaries or expanded our ways of doing things. If we remove that, we're removing an aspect of art, we're removing aspects of humanity, regardless of who did it. And it's a dangerous path. Sulkowitz's protest caught the attention of security, but the artist left before a supervisor arrived on the scene. MOMA issued a statement noting that we respect the rights of indi individuals to speak out on issues they feel strongly about and recognise that museums are important centres of debate and conversation. Neither the Met nor representatives of MTA Arts and Design responded to Artnet's news request for comment. So I was kind of right, she didn't get permission and she had to leave before they got security. So if she just asked permission to do this protest, I would have been okay with that. I would have disagreed with it and criticised her reasons, but I would have been okay with it. But she didn't. She literally walked up and removed her clothes in front of people. It was performance art. See, that explains why the museum wasn't quoted as supporting it or saying they gave permission for it. But the thing is, I would love to say that she's doing this to further the cause of social justice, and in many ways she is, but I think most of it is just for her. It's self-promotion. This is kind of what performance artists do, and she's no different. This is all about her, not necessarily the politics, so that's just a bonus. If she could promote herself whilst promoting the politics, I guess it's a win-win, and she's in the uh, news, so yeah, there's that. So there we go. The saga continues. Emma Solkovitz getting desperate to the point she has to do illegal protests. <laughs> Never change. I do hope one day that Nungesa does actually sue her. I know he sued the university, but I think he should sue her as well. She really needs to learn a lesson, but... Well, it's not going to work. That's not how life works. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, share and comment. Uh, donate to my uh, maker support if you would like to. Helps keep the lights on. And uh, until next time, spin your boy. And I'll see you later.